Hi everyone, this is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the impact of COVID-19 on retail industry. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to introduce our speaker. She's an entrepreneur and a retail experience enhancer she has worked with several international and national firms on various uh, projects for them in the retail industry. Her company, Think All Training and Consultancy, has recently been awarded as one of the top five startups for diversity, second year in a row. She also runs a foundation firm called Women Entrepreneurs Foundation, which is helping bridge the diversity in landscape of startup ecosystem. Her company promotes more women to take up entrepreneurship and help those who are already running a business. She has been a mentor to many startup organizations and has also seen an exit in a well-funded startup called Makeuppreneur India. She has been a keynote speaker in many international conferences, a writer for expert opinion and consultations for relevant industries. Please welcome Ms. Iti Rawat. Welcome, ma'am. Hi, uh, Sonali. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you please turn your video on? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Hello, yeah. everyone. And uh, thanks a lot, Sonali, for a wonderful introduction. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Great. So uh, it's a wonderful morning. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, and uh, as we start our webinar today, um, and the topic of the webinar is going to be impact of COVID-19 on retail industry. We have quite a number of participants who have logged in. Uh, we would like to wish you all a very good morning. I can see some people who have joined in from different parts of the country also. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Um, well, I have been with retail industry for past uh, more than 15 years now and have worked with companies like Arvind Brand, Nike, Apple, uh, and then started uh, Think Hall, which was a training and consulting firm, and have consulted many national and international retail firms. Um, also, we have recently ventured into an online academy now, which is called Think Hall Academy, which provides retail certification courses. Also, there's a job portal, which is called jobs.thinkhallacademy.com. So this was about me, uh, and now we will be shortly moving ahead with what the world is witnessing. Is nothing uh, short of something directly out of a Hollywood thriller movie. And uh, we have been talking about it for quite some time now. Many of you working directly on or indirectly with retail have been directly impacted with what we have called as a novel coronavirus COVID-19. And we want to understand that how these insecurities are gripping and what are the best measures that we can take to come out of it. What I would be covering in this webinar today is what will change once the lockdown is over, how the lives could be impacted, sales impact, and I would also try to give out a few immediate remedies and solutions uh, for you today. Understanding the customer sentiments and how to gain their trust back. Now, firstly, let's look at what exactly has changed in retail industry once the lockdown is over and uh, how we will uh, see a new phase, absolutely. So China was the first country to go into lockdown and uh, they are now open for the business. There is immense learning that we can get from there. And I also have a few lessons from Singapore, a few from UAE, et cetera, on what are uh, they currently working on and what are the moves and what are the typical trends. So typically what we have seen post the lockdown opening immediately, there have been low walk-ins and low sales. The fear of getting infected would still be there in the minds of the consumer and they would not be really coming out, uh, running to the stores to buy stuff. Supply chain are hit. We know that there are literally no transportation for moving goods, in fact, from factories and as well. Across the globe, we have seen more than $2 billion worth of 
both orders being getting cancelled. And this report was generated some 10, 15 days back. So there might be an increase in number now of the finished good cancellation. Some of the key retailers have done this to show, to get their cogs a little lower, which has actually got a dominoes effect now, leading to layoffs, that leading to low inventory, then leading to the lower sales and so on and so forth. But the estimate is that a revenue hit of 30 to 45 percent across retail uh, once the COVID lockdown also opens up. But it is not also going to be one size fits all. We need to understand the essential category that we say. It is uh, the other way around. Uh, as the logistics were hit and the demands were not being fulfilled, online grocery stores were taken aback by the surge of the demand that came out, which was ultimately fulfilled by the, fulfilled by the local grocery stores. Once the lockdown opens up, low walk-ins, revenue loss are almost for uh, more than a quarter to start discounting to attract the customer back. Uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think there's some disturbance with the mic in between. So your voice is breaking in between in the past one or two minutes. Okay. Uh, do you want me to repeat what I said? I don't... Exactly uh, no, no. It's... Uh, <laughs> no. Everything was clear, but there was just a little disturbance with the mic. So I just thought I'll uh, inform you about that. Sure. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good now. Okay. Thank okay. you. Continue with uh, where I left, which was basically that once the lockdown would be open, uh, opening up, although there will be low walk-ins, that is what we are going to see. Uh, the revenues also will be at a loss, and revenues lost we are estimating for almost nearly a quarter. Uh, the tendency uh, would be typically for a retailer to discount, and that would attract the customer backs and get the walk-ins up. But uh, some expert and brand leaders uh, have also predicted that end of season sale, which is USS, may start as early as May. But it won't be an extremely wise decision to start deep discounting because at this point of time, we need to hold on to our cash. That is very important. Now, it is not the time to challenge and get in competitive mode, but to empathize and collaborate more. There are various bodies which combine organizations like uh, us together, the uh, retail bodies, etc. And on top of that sits the government of India. So reach out and find uh, the right amiable way to sustain and wade through the hard times together. That is uh, one thing that I would like to highlight. I need not remind you that it's a collective strength that we put together. And we are amounting to almost 10% of the GDP of India itself. So there's lots that we can do once we have combined our forces together. Then the question comes, then how do we manage the sales? And that's the key thing that we are going to highlight over here. The customer would be finding it difficult to put a, their step back into the store. Once the store opens up also, there is going to be very, very strict guidelines around following their few steps that uh, will be highlighted to us, which will be wearing of mask might be made compulsory. Sanitization and maintaining social dist distancing would become a norm. In fact, uh, recently I was studying a study by Harvard, which mentioned that social distancing needs to be maintained till 2022 or till when the vac uh, vaccinations are discovered. There will be temperature checks at all the mall entrances for the customer. Not just that, many retailers have also planned not to allow the trial or even the exchange of the products. Now, this is not very um, retail friendly. This is very anti-experience for a shopper of, for looking forward towards a health hazard, etc. They might not just immediately snap out of it immediately on 4th of May and or just walk uh, down to the store. But don't fret. This is not the doomsday of a physical store. Uh, there are a lot many things that can be done. Only those companies will survive, which are going to stay agile, which are going to stay flexible for change.
talks about uh, if we put on the x axis the impact on the business and we can put four quadrants to this uh, the first being a significant impact on business for the covid 19 and on the lower end you will see a low impact on the business and on the y axis if we just put all the companies which have got exposure likelihood means uh, if you are at a, um, a business where uh, the exposure is going to be really hazardous versus uh, no contact kind of a thing and i have also put in uh, some of the companies uh, so, sorry some of the industry specifics that uh, you right at the um, this quadrant itself where the impact on the business is going to be very very high and uh, it's it's the exposure likelihood says that we are in the hazardous area versus uh, bfsi uh, the, would be somewhere at a significant impact but uh, although there is not much contact that you see uh, coming up on the healthcare side, uh, the, the impact on the business is going to be a little low. Uh, in fact, they are actually making a lot of money at this point of time. But it's, it's a very hazardous business. They are putting their lives at the risk right now. And the, the, uh, the trades, which we can say are completely gung-ho about uh, what has happened, would be people like online grocery stores, ed tech, et cetera. So uh, what are the solutions that uh, we provide for such a, um, such an industry, such a place is that if you are somewhere in the red quadrant, what we need to do is reserve cash, protect your human resource and innovate for new channel of sales or product. If you are some, somebody in the orange quadrant, you need to connect with people. Somebody in the low um, the, or the blue quadrant is somebody like uh, healthcare. You need to self-protect. That's very important. So all the monies that is currently going in the innovation, RD, et cetera, is to make sure that you are self-protected as well. And that's where the energy should be uh, around. And in the four quadrant, the energies needs to be on increasing the supplies and increasing the inventory uh, for yourself. Uh, very clearly, even if you are in ed tech, currently this is the place, this is the time when you have to come out and uh, sell more and uh, uh, you know give out more to people. Similarly, for online grocery stores, also people who do not have enough inventory are the ones who are actually facing a problem. I will be taking more questions uh, in case if you have uh, queries around uh, this particular model. Uh, a little later at the end of the webinar, we'll move forward to what exactly we can do at different levels. I'm, uh, I was just looking at who all have joined and we can see there are people from different aspects of retail who have joined this webinar. So let me start with uh, the different levels of the company. Let's start with the front end retail line uh, sales staff first. The key area for them is to train and keep themselves prepared. Train now. That's very important. And before the lockdown, you have to make sure that you keep educating and keep learning yourself for the new things that are going to come up and understand that how a customer needs to be dealt with. Second, if you look at marketing, they have got a very, very key role to play right now. They have to be more prepared with the communication that they have ever been you need to bring the customer back to the store and you need to make sure that you tell them that how safe secure and hygienic conditions we are maintaining uh, that how exactly we are i was recently watching one of the webinars uh, that uh, dubai's Mid middle east uh, retailer association had shown and they showed a video right in the beginning which showed that every nook and corner of their retail spaces have been sanitized properly and how nicely they have been uh, done and this was sent out to different customers to make sure that uh, they understand that how deeply they are involved in it and how nicely they have taken care of it the task is going to be absolutely tough but it is almost like asking somebody to take a leap of faith by saying that please fall down and I'm going to give a catch to you. That is how you should be meticulously planning your marketing strategies right now. As far as operations are concerned, if you look at the operation side of it, you need to constantly maintain that hygiene factor, the factor of making sure that things are uh, in place, uh, there is no turnaround that uh, is 
uh, being done. You need to also keep in touch regularly with the local healthcare authorities. That's very important because you are not a sanitization expert. Don't take things in your hand and think that you can sanitize the whole place up yourself. You need to make sure that their guidelines that they have laid out are properly met and that also has been communicated out to the people. Uh, this is also the time to talk to uh, different mall owners, talk to your landlords. And I'm not just talking about uh, revision on your rentals. Uh, this is the time when you have to discuss some meaningful steps to make sure that uh, the customers come back to you. This is uh, the time when you can sit down and think of some win-win situation where you can plan uh, and tackle this uh, problem in advance. Uh, make sure that your opening procedures of your stores and malls are in place. Singapore, Dubai, China all have got well-prepared step-by-step guidelines on what are the things that needs to be done and what needs to be adapted for making sure that the customer making sure that what you need to do to uh, get the customers back with a lot of safety and hygiene in place. Uh, you also need to look forward to the insight on what should be the complete guidelines. So make sure, I'm, I'm happy to help you in case any of you are looking forward for my help in that. Uh, we do have a standard procedures and all and we'll be happy to connect with you in case if you need a plan for that. Looking at the supply chain side now, now these guys are the ones who should be helping a lot with the company to uh, come out with feasible options of cutting cost. At the same time, they need to uh, plan something around uh, their, web, uh, their warehouses. How do we maintain social distancing in the warehouses? What are the norms that needs to be brought into the warehouses and while uh, taking an inventory from one place to the other? Designers right now needs to think on lines of sustainability. Merchandisers will have to look at buying locally. Uh, cost will be highly reduced if you are buying locally. And of course, uh, not to mention that Make in India is in progress. A lot of people are benefit benefiting from it. Let's help our economy as well as your company to buy locally and uh, you have to save your cost there. When it comes to human resource department, now this uh, department becomes very, very important. The first and foremost thing that you need to think about is your people. There should not be a constant discussion around how we can just cut out jobs, etc., or cut out salaries, etc., but sit down with your leadership team and come out with plan to save each and every individual, save each and every person's salary as well as their jobs. That's what the human resource should be doing and thinking there and putting their heads on. Train, train and train every single person that you have in the company that should be put into training. And you have seen how I have laid out for each and every department, what are the different things that they will be facing. So you think about that the, your, the company has been put on a reset button. This is like a change management, complete change management needs to be done. And that's what you need to look at in terms of learning and development. So do not undermine the training at this point of time. It is the most important thing to keep the minds also going for people who are probably sitting down and relaxing at home and thinking work and uh, home is fun. Uh, so human resource have to really be in action. When we talk about the leadership team, now these guys would be focusing more on the PNL, the strategies, etc. Very importantly, how to save cash and how to uh, manage the change that is currently happening. Needless to say that you should be thinking about also the collaborations, partnerships to keep everyone afloat. There would be a key role also of very important team, which will be crisis management team. So if you have not thought about a crisis management team in your companies till date, you have to think about it immediately. <clears throat> there might be unfavorable circumstances and situations that will be happening. So think about the matrices that you will have to adapt to. Think about the hierarchy that you have to respond to and create that crisis management team who will be taking care of this. For companies, um, who uh, have been doing this um, 
pre-planning of COVID, they are currently in a much better and more confident phase and they are looking forward to uh, do some phenomenal work once the lockdown gets over. Moving on to the sales part, which is my favorite topic too, and, uh, and a subject which is very, very dear to me. Uh, you guys definitely have got an enormous task in front of you. Your targets have taken a setback almost uh, two months and uh, you are going to begin only with ugly. That is what uh, are the simple terms that I'm going to say. So innovate, strategize, that is what uh, we can say right now. You will fail leading uh, to company shutdowns and job losses if you do not pay attention to your sales figures right now. You don't plan ahead at least till December right now. So think about those innovative methods that is going to keep your sales going on. And uh, one very important lesson that I learned during the sale days uh, in, in Apple when I was working there was if the customers don't come to you, you go and reach out to the customers. That's the best method that people can adopt at this point of time. First is that uh, why don't we think about turning our additional frontline staff to delivery persons and we start home delivery. Teach them contactless deliveries. Have a process in place how you would be taking orders on the phone, on WhatsApp, etc. Personalization would be very, very important to get your touch over there, specifically for brands who are premium and luxury and above. In case uh, such a retail is there, then uh, please support um, your software, etc., with a heat wave map to make sure that there is a social proofing uh, that is happening. If you say that a uh, joint 20,000 customers doing this, this is again, that's what is called a social proofing. So make sure that you have your uh, communication around it, you have your words around it and, and uh, heat wave your um, software. That, that's what uh, I would call it. For stores who have got a little substantial database and can create um, their own micro websites. Um, this would be with the updated inventory, of course, and uh, you can reach out to the customer with a link uh, of your website, micro website, through uh, WhatsApp messages, emailers, etc., so that the customers near you can uh, see that what exactly is the inventory currently lying, and then the personalization and the home delivery and other things can happen immediately. This is a very important factor at this point of time to make sure that uh, you are reaching out to the customers on a regular basis while you are keeping your uh, sales going on at the retail as well. Understand the current, uh, the customers that you are dealing with would have learned to live their lives with less. And um, so there has to be a reason why they, they will come back and buy from you again. So to get those reasons out, I was thinking about two strategies that immediately comes uh, to our mind is, one is that if you can think about uh, the businesses that have not been affected much, the people who are related to these businesses might be having cash, uh, once you are out of the locked house, the people who would open up to buying, to splurge, to again get back to their uh, romantic dates or going out and shopping and splurging would be those who are not really affected by COVID-19. And those are your customers right now. The second thing that I can think about would be to stand for something. Stand for something to get uh, attention of your customers immediately. And uh, when I say stand for something, uh, that means uh, try to have a great social impact attached to your sales. When you say that uh, when you buy product from us, uh, X amount goes to a charity for feeding so many poor people, that is where customers would actually get your buy-in. Think about it. At this point of time, there are miseries around people. There have been a lot of people making a social impact. There have been people who have been trying and dying to come out and help people. And they have not got venues to do that. 
when you come out like an ethnic brand, ethic, ethical brand and say that um, here is my proposition that for a sale of uh, say XYZ rupees, I'm going to put it in the charity and feed so many people, then the sale automatically goes up. So stand for something for your sale to happen and the customer would definitely identify back with you and that they will definitely put their trust back in you. Remember that it is important to reduce that friction. You will have a very tight one customer that needs to be loosened up. And reciprocation is yet another way that you have to start showing. So even the, the tiniest of generosity that they are showing by making sure that the sales are happening, show it back to them. Imagine if you go to a store and you buy something which you are currently um, planning to buy for say thousand rupees and you get a 20 percent discount back for your next purchase and this comes in even better when this re reciprocity uh, is uh, through a surprise you don't expect people to uh, do something good to you and suddenly you get something which is very generous so something which is very nice that is when the customer gets your buy-in and a customer builds back a trust in you. So these are the ways where you have to, of course, attach yourself. So do not just jump into a May end of uh, sale and say it's flat 50% off uh, on the window. That will definitely not get the customer back. But what is going to get the customer back are these courteous and very helpful ways. Now, um, lastly, uh, what uh, we also need to remember is that speed will only be secondary to quality. Quality is something that uh, the customer will foresee. Um, in essentials, there might be uh, speed also that currently people are looking for and uh, it does change from industry to industry wise. But uh, quality will make you stick for a long term and you will get long term customers. Those uh, online grocers, I'm talking about grocers right now because those are the guys who have uh, been selling so far or the medicinal stores uh, who have been selling, the pharmacists, etc. Uh, the guys who have got good inventory, people who have been able to service their customers on a regular basis, they have the ones who, uh, whom the customers are going back to nowadays. Similarly, once the lockdown is over, there would be shortage of inventory probably because of the logistic issues for some of the retailers some of the retailers it might not be there but don't always think about speed what you need to focus upon would be the quality customers will always be sticking to the businesses which will be courteous willing and helpful so you need to understand that retailers economics and uh, make sure that you do not uh, undermine the power of customer relationship. The relationship that we will be building would be through services, experience, customer relationship, etc. And those are the meaningful things that will take you a long way. So what all you can do right now apart from this is, uh, apart from your home deliveries, uh, probably invest into automation of orders because that is the way forward in case, God forbids, but in case if uh, COVID problem is exaggerated till 21 or 22 as the experts believe, then we are thinking the long term and uh, not just the short term goals that we are talking about right now. We have to have that uh, planned strategy which are very clearly differentiated into those short term goals as well as those long term goals as the strategist feel. And uh, those short term goals would be immediately tackling the problems that are currently at hand and long term would be something that you will be thinking about what happens if, if uh, the exit happens at a long term. Not just that, uh, currently it's also the time for you to think about your exit strategies from this COVID. It is going to be a phased, phased one. It is not going to be as simple as just uh, one day it's open up and it's, it's bright and sunny. 
but think about the ways how you will again get back to the branding side how, how again you will start getting back the higher sales in port how again our economies are going to get back to what we have been doing and uh, retail has been phenomenal retail has been giving amazing uh, economies to the government and uh, we are booming very well our cagr was very bright and uh, together all of us should be in it to make sure that this is ongoing and we continue with the same pace that that's that's very important uh, for uh, people who have got uh, bigger um, uh, bigger retail outlets or bigger retailers or chain of stores those people would be currently thinking about how we can get into more cashless more self checkouts and all one of the sales strategy also suggests that try to convince your customer to buy things with credit or with card uh what it does automatically is increase the sales little bit this is all neuroscience uh, but uh, when you do a little bit research around it you will find that typically a a customer who has been uh, or who is habitual of buying through credit cards would have more spending power than a person who buys out of cash so uh, find out ways of how you can entice a customer to uh, buy through credit cards um it can be self checkout systems or it can be something that you can collaborate with a bank and uh, say a 10% additional off this is a typical retail system that uh, many retailers have been adapting uh, for a very long time but uh, now is the time to probably implement them uh, if you have not think about it uh, thought about it and um, small retailers specifically needs to keep this in mind that automation is now the word and uh, it is the need of the hour so you cannot go away from technology if you have not thought about implementing that technology think about it now think about how you can make sure that technology is now part of your game and it it, it is a, as a strategy you have implemented it at different points uh, wherever required if you think about some of the luxury retailers now they already have got very limited walk-ins but uh, they might not be losing so many customers is what i believe um, from the trend that we have been seeing uh, but needless to say that you have the biggest impact in uh, that segment itself in um, as far as india is concerned we have we were trying to understand that which section is uh, hugely impacted as of now uh so people who are into premium and retail uh, uh premium retail and luxury segment uh, they might be looking at uh, deploying technologies like ar vr for example vr goggles um, are things which have been talked about but not really implemented so far but um, maybe this is the time now that uh, we should start thinking about how we can build our own experience centers and uh, then service people at home and deliver at home uh, needless to say that iot omni channel are going to play a huge role in uh, managing your inventory managing your sales and making sure there is a thorough Uh, throughput that has been happening on a regular basis so we need to keep that focus on in terms of sale and we need to keep on working around it as much as possible the last bit of uh, my webinar today which was understanding of the customer sentiments uh, so in simply word simple words if i put it is uh, think about uh, yourself that you are logged into a prison a cage it's like a big boss house uh, where you are locked in and uh, then suddenly you are let go once you go out uh, you might not really end up splurging and i have mentioned this across my webinar a lot of times that people have uh, now lived a life where uh, they understand what is less is more and uh, they have uh, they have realized that they have been splurging they have been buying more than what is required so what are the right ways now to um, you know manage their uh, spending the spending powers etc uh, also uh, it is not going to be one size fits all uh, 
there would be different customers. Some people would come out and uh, start splurging immediately. There would be some people who would continue their sentiments. The worst sentiments that is going to be uh, the major factor of people not getting back to the stores would be the threat or the fear of getting infected. So as mentioned earlier that uh, through marketing activities, through uh, various ways where we can convince the customer to make sure uh, that your store is safe, put various uh, methods and means to talk out to them, tell them on a continuous basis that uh, these are the ways that uh, we have uh, sanitized our store we are making sure that the precautions are in place. We are making sure that uh, things are not haywire. You need to keep that focus on a regular basis. And uh, understanding the customer would be the best thing. The customers would only stick to the brands who understand them. So if you are not able to understand those customer sentiments right now and work around it, uh, it is going to be difficult. So stay agile, stay flexible, and uh, try to make sure that you understand what uh, needs to be done to bring that leap of faith uh, back. And uh, you should be able to catch them. You should be so well prepared that if a customer puts their trust back in you, you should be able to catch them. And have your strategies, plan, plan, and plan. Uh, get your each and every person trained. Like we have again and again uh, said that, uh, think about it that the whole industry is on a reset button and now we, we have to replan the whole strategy and the things around it. That's how we should be uh, working right now. And this was the end of whatever uh, we have uh, planned and gathered. So in the last, I would like to sum up this particular webinar stating uh, that uh, think of it like uh, you were in a war-like situation and lead it like a war-like situation. And in the famous words of uh, Winston Churchill, I would like to say that we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills we shall never surrender and that's the spirit of retail and that's the spirit of uh, people who are attached to retail and i would like to open uh, this webinar to questions uh, sonali i know i've completed it a little before time but uh, uh, let's see the, if we have questions and uh, we can take it up now Good. thank you so much for such a wonderful session ma'am it was very insightful and thank you so, so much for sharing all those wonderful points. Uh, we have quite a few questions uh, lined up. So should I uh, say the questions and you can give the answer accordingly, if that's okay? Sure. Perfect. Sure. Okay, so Mr. Pradeep Pandey says, looking at the condition, we really don't know how to retain our team also for how long we will have to pay their salary without the business to retain them. All right, uh, so uh, I completely understand, Pradeep, where you're coming from. And we have seen overall how uh, some of the retailers have either been cutting their uh, salaries or there are job losses all across the retail. But uh, think about it from uh, the war footing end and uh, think what are the innovative ways that uh, you can manage the retail with. Uh, if there is a pivot that you can plan, I'm not sure that uh, what exactly uh, your business is right now and what part of retail are you referring to, but uh, think about it uh, from uh, innovative ways. Most of the companies right now are not going to think this as a crisis situation, but more as an opportunity. Uh, so in case if there is a way for you to pivot or diversify, into various different ways uh, where you can see a forthcoming uh, revenue. Think and plan around those lines is what I would say. And I've already given you a lot of tips around uh, which particular department to think about what, what uh, kind of uh, retailers should be thinking about what uh, exactly. If you can get some tips from there, then nothing like it. Great. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Shejal Balakrishnan. 
He says, will smaller stores require an e-commerce platform to cater to the customer, basically a simple order management and delivery system? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, the smaller stores, what they would be facing is exactly e-commerce website uh, might be little on the expensive side. Some people would say that I might not have a very good uh, uh, background of IT also to understand that how exactly e-commerce works. And it needs a lot of operations and it needs a lot of meticulous planning. So the immediate solution for a smaller store would be probably to tie up with the e-commerce uh, solution providers. There are various platforms which are marketplace, which you can go to and uh, get involved with. So it would be great if uh, you start thinking about those partnerships, collaborations at this point of time, which is going to really benefit your business and keep the sales clock ringing. Uh, the registers needs to be ringing at this point of time. So the best methods out would be these at uh, this point of time. It should be a win-win situation for all. So the next question is from Ms. Rachna Singh. She says, how, we, how will we be able to come back again in the market after COVID-19, like the challenges we are going to face after this lockdown? Okay, uh, Rachna, I'm not sure exactly which particular part of retail are you talking about, but I've already mentioned across that a post-COVID lockdown, the challenges that you will have very clearly are uh, which everyone is anticipating right now low sales low walk-ins etc uh, how we will fulfill those are uh, one way uh, what i have mentioned is that how if we can plan a way to reaching out to the customers rather than them coming back to us and the other way is to bring them back to us if you want if you are in such a retail that you cannot service till they are there at your store then you need to think about those innovative ways where they can connect back to you and uh, your marketing should be such that it is almost like them believing in you with your their lives. So uh, it has to be very, very substantial. It needs to be something like um, you know, when you say that you're standing for something, like I mentioned, if you are there for a social impact or a social cause and you say that X amount of my sales, when you spend uh, 100 rupees at my store, one rupee will go uh, to for a poor to be fed or one rupee is going to go into PM Cares, uh, COVID-19 Foundation, or there are various other things that you can connect yourself with. So those are the ways which can build that trust back of the customer. Those are the ways where you can actually uh, tell the customers that we are there for help and uh, communicating out on a regular basis that you have well sanitized the place. There's complete check of uh, uh, sanitization. Uh, there's complete check of making sure that uh, the people who are coming in are uh, uh, definitely uh, under a, uh, very hardcore guidelines and they are not going to deviate from it. Uh, convert these into videos show uh, that your store is getting sanitized around um, make a video out of it put it out on the social media talk to your customers and talk more right now uh, more you communicate out at this point of time more they will get back to you that is what uh, i think is the need of the hour perfect and i think this also answers our next question which is from mr venkat he says what are the top two strategies to get customers back using technology beyond the need of the hour hygiene and sanitization so would you like to add anything else or i think the previous answer was uh, yeah i think uh, technology is going to be the key role uh, going forward uh, you have seen suddenly how we have started using zoom and uh, all the various uh, conference uh, measures, uh, meetings have all come online. Everything people are talking about online. Schools are now online. And uh, people who have been uh, pushing the technology back for a very long time now are now thinking about how to get technology to uh, be of use. Uh, thankfully, some smart players were there who has already put in place various other measures of making sure that uh, technologies are well utilized Utilized. but now is the time for you to start thinking about a long-term strategy 
whenever you are putting in uh, technology, when you're thinking about e-commerce tie-ups, think about that how I can go long-term with it and what would be my plan around it. Think about if you are putting in self-checkouts, then what is my long-term plan around the self-checkout system and why I'm implementing it and various other things. Needless to say that this is going to involve some investment and we need to plan for it. People who have some cash ready with them, those are the guys who are uh, on a happier um, area and a happier side of the graph right now. But uh, people who are right now struggling with the cash, those are the guys where uh, people are saying that they are going to shut down and close, etc. But there are always ways of uh, not being disappointed and staying confident. Uh, uh, what I would suggest for all of them would be to think about more innovative ways of pivoting and diversifying their um, uh, their uh, roles. Perfect. Uh, so, Mr. Alok says, could you highlight the impact and possible actions for the service industry, please? Uh, by service industry uh, is uh, exactly which one you're talking about. Uh, services in various uh, ways. Uh, it, retail services you're talking about specifically? Uh, okay, I, I'm not sure, but uh, all right. What I'll do is probably we are around retail, then let me just talk about the retail service industry right now. Um, depending upon that, what exactly you are servicing, if it is a consultancy service or it is a, a manpower uh, providing services or um, training services, uh, every part is going to have a different impact uh, overall. So as far as the manpower planning services are concerned, uh, People are pivoting towards or reaching out to clients who are currently in need of uh, more manpower. Like your online grocers, they are currently understaffed. They are in fact hiring uh, more people. We recently learned that uh, one of the online grocers, I think Big Basket, were, was planning to hire some 10,000 more personnel. They have in fact done a tie-up with uh, some of the companies right now, which uh, are um, having their retail staff, frontline staff sitting at the home if they can provide an immediate assistant uh, from them and they uh, want to make some extra bucks, then they are getting hired by um, uh, those grocers right now. If you are looking at uh, the consulting, uh, so investments definitely would only happen at uh, from people who are not like re really affected. So you need to talk to people who are cash rich right now and uh, get your clients there as at, at this point of time the the sentiments are not exactly uh, right now on expenditure the sentiments are not exactly so people who are providing training uh, most of the external trainers uh, businesses have been cut down and uh, really come to a standstill uh, some of the recruitment services have come to a standstill right now so um, and and consultancy as well uh, consultancy where it is happening is probably at uh, the change management side so if you can uh, create those services around your uh, work, that is where it is going to make a, a direct impact. Great. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Ashish Ahuja. He says, any special comments on furniture retail stores? Okay, so furniture retail sales, uh, I think it's directly connected to uh, a long-term planned uh, sale. And in India, it's typically around with uh, a buying of a house or renovation of a house, etc. Customer sentiments are not exactly very strong in terms of splurging and spending. So this uh, retail store might take a hit back. And um, needless to say that there has to be some of the other innovative way to find uh, the right way of selling um, but this is one uh, such area that people cannot live without also so if you are in such a situation where a long-term planning has been done and there are some cash reserves already with you you will be in a very good situation but uh, places where uh, you know a long term if we see furniture sales retail is uh, retail is going to get back into vogue again and it this should uh, start working again but at this point of time um, it's it's very difficult situation and uh, you have to work out ways on 
how to get the sales back right uh, so the next question is from mr sohail qureshi and it's a difficult one given the situation so he says can you please give some advice points to restart business of travel agency uh okay travel agency um it is a needless to say a very very difficult one but again uh, looking at india and the kind of profile that we are into uh, people will not live without uh, traveling in fact uh, uh, recently there was an incident where uh, people there was a rumor that uh, bandra station has opened up and there was a huge surge of people coming on to the bandra station suddenly so uh, once the travel uh, opens up uh, the business is going to get back um, definitely uh, other ways that uh, people are looking at is your safety guidelines side of it so if there is a way which you can innovate into uh, giving out consulting to people who are looking for the right safety guidelines probably airlines etc or uh, giving out products which will be required by some of the airlines uh, to get that safety standards up providing masks uh, providing hand gloves sanitizers etc in a small pack to entice the customer back to your business uh, those are the ways probably which is very um, solution driven and uh, the right um, sentiments it hits the right chord also right pain points of the customer also when uh, you are doing uh, you are in that business probably that would help uh, for you to get started great uh, so the next question is from mr shivam gujral he says i would like to know that we are retailers from new delhi based in karolbag market that is one of the busiest markets in delhi so i would like to know how to explain the clients to come or if we go to their house will that be possible that they would call us to their place wow delhi delhi is a very very interesting market and i love karolbag i must say uh, it's one of the very very interesting markets uh but uh, i imagine your store has to be a would be a probably a stand alone store uh, where um, you would have probably one or couple of other stores as well um so at that there um, as i said that the guidelines has to be maintained and you have to make sure that you reach out to the customer stating that the whole store has been uh, cleansed sanitized properly using the guidelines etc and uh, uh, make a short video it need not be a very fancy video it can be shot from your mobile also very nicely done um, that uh, there's a the, there's a, a complete sanitization that has been done for the store and we are already and open uh, opening up again uh, once you do that customer should come back um, and if you want to reach out to them uh, i think the best and the earliest ways of uh, selling the products was the uh, from these small uh, you know one single stand alone stores was to go and uh, reach out to the customer with a gamut of products that you have and uh, showcase it to them this was very personalized and the most luxurious way of reaching out to your customers this has uh, been shut down at uh, this time at this time people are readily coming to the stores but, but this used to happen long long time back so think about those innovative ways and although this would be a, a a great personalization for your customer but this would also enhance and up the ante of the experience that you can provide to the customers uh, by reaching out to them at that level so it would be great if uh, you can uh, do that or else uh, the last option is of course have your own uh, e-commerce website if you are thinking about a web a customer base of more than 3 lakhs very easily any um, retail with more than 3 lakh customer base can have their own micro website where you can showcase all your products very quickly click pictures of them put it online and uh, get get things rolling and you can find multiple companies uh, freelancers people who are creating websites uh, like anything and just just use that technology and uh, you would be back in business uh, great so the next question uh, says if we sell our course online we have the fear that we lose classroom students our course is exclusive and there's no alternative in the market all right uh, so uh, this is um, chicken and egg story right uh, when we say that we are very exclusive and we can only do it in the classroom session it cannot be taken online 
uh, then find out ways probably where you have an additional inventory. By additional inventory, I'm saying that innovate a new product, which is only for your online. Ed tech business right now as are at their best. Uh, they are uh, booming like anything. We recently heard from an academy and they announced it online that they have already crossed more than uh, 1 million uh, hours of uh, view. And uh, that's amazing. And if, if you are into a business which is into selling uh, courses, please get into an online course and it would be an amazing sale. That is what I would believe. So the next question is from Mr. Gaurav Agarwal. He says, uh, what would be the impact on companies who are suppliers to big retailers for their products and also working as shop fitters for them for the new stores? And also uh, working as? Uh, shop fitters for them for the new stores. Shop fitters. For the, uh, yeah, sure. So uh, by supplies, and if you are a shop fitter, means that you are doing some interior work for the store, which is uh, what I believe uh, that you're talking about. Um, what uh, we have to look forward to is uh, if there is any maintenance issue, etc. right now in the current existing store. Uh, the retail situation is such that some of the stores are in fact shutting down uh, rather than opening up. So in case if you are into that business right now, then uh, renovations is something that you can look forward to and uh, get your uh, uh, get started with wherever the landscape is developing right now. Uh, India is still uh, developing and uh, the retail landscape is also pretty much developing. Uh, so those uh, underdeveloped malls or uh, malls which are under construction right now are not going to stop. Even though there is a COVID uh, situation here, uh, they will uh, try their best to get back to the business. Some of them will float through, some of them will not, especially those with the uh, big brand names and the big uh, cash-rich uh, uh, pockets. Those are the guys who are going to continue with that. So uh, those are the areas probably you'll have to think and impact uh, and get your clients from. Right, so we are almost about to wrap up the session. Uh, so there are still a lot more questions that are left. So I guess I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, so one person says, how to gain confidence among customers in restaurant business post COVID effect? Uh, right, uh, restaurant is uh, really going to be a tough one because this is where you come back and uh, you have to eat and uh, you are getting served by another person that's uh, yet another problem. So you need to have to get that faith back uh, in people that uh, this is uh, what the safety and hygiene uh, and guidelines that we have been maintaining and um, you have to train your staff. Train uh, like you have not trained them ever because at this point of time the sentiments of the customer is such that even the slightest of the mistake that you do is going to ruin your business completely so make sure that every single part has been looked at although it's a it's a shut shop for most of the places but uh, we are seeing that uh, swiggy is uh, still on the move and uh, there are still some restaurants which are home delivering so those are the places where you can probably um, think about uh, your customer and uh, reaching your uh, base too and uh, definitely uh, it's a tough one but uh, we are all going through it and we are all in it together great uh, so just two last questions. One is from Mr. Abhishek Jain. He has actually messaged multiple times for us to see his question. So I guess we'll take that. Uh, he says, in renting retail business, like renting Fast and Jerry or books, how will customers see it after the lockdown? Will people prefer renting items as it saves cost, but will he take it right from safety perspective? We are into kids' toy renting business specifically. Will customers' trust be gained back? If yes, how? Please suggest. So again, in renting business, uh, the, it goes through a lot of touch. 
uh, that is the problem that customers will see as uh, at this point of time definitely saving cost is a big big game right now that you are playing and uh, uh, that is the uh, focus point for you to continue thinking about and if you are able to convince the customer that any toy that is coming near you how it has been sanitized and made sure that it is uh, completely infection free it is completely virus free uh, put those guidelines in practice talk to your customer communicate out to them them as much as possible and uh, make sure that uh, you have those uh, videos those marketing creatives uh, it's there on your social media and everywhere and uh, your customers are uh, sure about it that uh, the products that they are buying from you are absolutely safe and it will not harm their children perfect so the last question uh, it's a generalized question uh, from mr terugu venkat he says which are your social channels to follow for insights and updates that you could share uh, okay you can uh, just google me on uh, google uh, iti rawat uh, i would be there <laughs> the list of i you can follow me on facebook i'm there on twitter i'm there on instagram i'm there on uh, linkedin uh i prefer uh, linkedin a lot because uh, that's where i can immediately reply back to you and uh, i i'm there most of the time uh in case uh, if there is something is it okay if i give out my email id right now yeah of course okay so uh, you can write to me directly as well my email id is uh, iti at uh, thinkhall.in i will just uh, write it in the uh, comment section uh so there's no chat section over here but uh, we'll make sure that we send out your email ids to everyone who has attended the session yes perfect okay thank you so much ma'am thank you for being so patient and sharing your wonderful insights with us and to all the attendees thank you so much for your time we hope you were able to add some value to your lives through this session uh, thanks again <laughs> thank thanks a lot sonali and thanks a lot to business x for organizing this and a very very grateful thank you to all the attendees for this program uh, please do connect and if there's any way that we can help you out uh, in this uh, times we are there to help you uh, thank you so much <music>